Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim's Special Edition. My name is Camel. Now, Skyrim is a game with many hidden secrets to uncover, sprinkled throughout the vast wildernesses which are to be explored, the deep dungeons which are to be delved, and any and all curious crevices to be thoroughly probed. There's nothing better than discovering a sneaky little treasure chest tucked away for one in hundreds to find. Well, today we will be those one in hundreds, as I will be showing you the locations of 10 hidden treasure chests throughout Skyrim and its DLCs. Be sure to let me know if you know of any other hidden treasure for me to cover. And if learning about the hidden secrets of Skyrim interests you, be sure to check out my other Skyrim videos. They can be found in the playlist via the link down in the description. Now down there in the old description you can also find links to all of my social media. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter along with joining our brand new Discord server. I very much look forward to seeing you there. So now let's get our explorer's gear on, make sure we've got plenty of carry room or Lydia to lug our halls as we head out to go and reap ripe booty tucked away in the hidden and secretive corners of Tamriel. To begin our treasure-filled quest, we'll first be visiting an ancient and occult tower, which crowns the precipitous bluff that rises from the south and looms over the frost-bitten city of Dawnstar in the Pale. Once here, to the right of the entrance, there is a toppled wall, which actually acts as a fractured ramp that with some acrobatic enthusiasm we can leap up onto, giving us access to the upper level of the externals here. If we now make our way all the way around to the northern side of the tower, along with a vast and magnificent view, we can also find a lone chest hidden out in the open, only to be seen by the prying eyes of a winged creature or those of an avid explorer such as us. Now this character that I'm playing is level 59. Your level will of course determine the quality of the loot you find. With that in mind, inside this chest I found steel armor, an iron sword of fatigue, an amethyst, an ebony ingot, 21 gold, and a grand soul gem, and large antlers, which come together to bring a combined total value of 904 gold. Unlike me dancing, that's not bad at all. For this next chest, we will have to enter Nightcaller Temple. To do so, we'll need to pick up the quest called Waking Nightmare, which can be acquired in the city of Dawnstar. Or of course, if you've done it, you can just come back here. So at the end of this quest, Erendir will lead us to the final chamber of the tower, where he will do magic with the Skull of Corruption, Vermina's Daedric Artifact. This whole show is very distracting both visually and in concept. Because of this, most players don't comb the area, which is a shame, because over to the right hand side of the stairs, tucked against the edge of this cyclopean podium, is a boss level chest. Inside I found a glass sword of the blaze, steel plate gauntlets of sure grip, boar meat, 164 gold, a petty soul gem, a spell term of Ray's zombie, and a copy of the Wolf Queen Volume 6, and robes of minor restoration, combining to bring in a total value of 1957 gold, which is a huge haul. Although loot this illustrious in nature is to be expected from a boss level chest. Next up, we will be heading to the tremendous and breathtaking subterranean Dwemer city of Blackreach. Here there is a myriad of marvels to wonder and ponder over. If learning about all of Blackreach's secrets, mysteries and curiosities tickles your fancy, I would wholeheartedly recommend the Curating Curious Curiosities episode for Blackreach. That will I have no doubt tickle you in ways that nothing else can. But for now, I'm going to share with you one of them right here, as we have the hidden chest of Mizenkeleft Gatehouse. So in the northwesternmost corner of the explorable Blackreach, there is a hill that leads up to a huge plated stone and metal archway. And this leads to the Mizinkaleft Gatehouse. But before walking through there, there is actually a hidden chest right here. It's in this very shot. Can you see it? Hmm. Well, to get to it, we'll need to head to the left of the first structures instead of following the pathway through the middle to the gatehouse. This will take us up a dark and dim causeway built of a molded dirt, not having been tread by anything living or dead for eons. 
rooms. Up here, we can find, pushed into a corner, an ancient Dwemer chest, just begging to be pried open. Inside, I found an orcish war axe of devouring, steel, imperial gauntlets, a flawless emerald, and a potion of healing, combining to bring a value of 1,670 gold, which isn't truly astronomical, but it is entirely pleasing, and a very solid reward for our exploration. Now for the next six chests, we will be heading to one of my favorite dungeons, purely for its creativity in layout. Which actually reminds me greatly of dungeons from the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, which, if you are unaware, had incredible dungeon design, the likes of which makes Skyrim's look like kindergarten projects. Check out this video here if you want what House Dagoth would call Ot Camporior a taste of what Morrowind's level design was like. But back to Skyrim, this is Damp Hall Mine, found in the midwest of the island of Solstheim added with the Dragonborn DLC. So after we walk through the Crooked Stone hallway, at the opening of the mine, we'll come out into this large room, which is comprised entirely of a flooded sinkhole, a black abyss, littered with corpses. If we dare dive down, into the fetid pool, we'll find a drowned mortuary, a lazily planted graveyard. Amongst the bones, we'll find an apothecary satchel on the silk floor, a container of note, if such things interest you. But we also have a chest, a sunken wooden chap that has likely been sitting here for hundreds of years. Inside it, I found a glass bow, a blue butterfly wing, 46 gold, a potion of healing, and a scroll of frenzy coming together to bless me with a combined total value of 1,004 gold, which is actually really good for a crummy wooden chest like this. Now further into the mine, after passing through a well-lit and fern-dotted deep stone passageway, we'll duck through a shallow opening out into a much more spacious chamber of the cave, which, staying in theme with the mine's name, is flooded. If we head towards the lantern at the pond's edge, then wade cautiously into the water and make our way to the left, we'll see there is a small opening into the rock wall with an illuminated and siren-like glow that draws us in. Luckily, all that awaits us in here is treasure laid out on the table, a find to put a smile on anyone's face. But there is more than meets the eye here, as at the back of this small chamber is a collection of strange tube-like rock formations, which actually hide a small corner of the room away, with their obscure angles and bearding of hanging moss and grasses veiling the petite void, which we're going to penetrate. As we lurk around this corner, we'll find that there is a small wooden chest waiting to be found, and today is its lucky day. Inside this chest, I found Stalhrim light armor, a hide helmet, which wasn't very good at hiding apparently, 56 gold, and an amulet of Talos, which come together to bring a combined total value of 1031 gold, which is pretty good considering that along with this, we get to collect the other treasure from this room. Now, if we swim from this alcove back into the chamber whence we came, we'll want to paddle across all the way to the other side of this mysteriously dark body of water, where, under the aquatic surface, we will find a number of bones sticking out of the sand and silt that forms the floor of the pool. Amongst them is a skeleton clutching at a strong box. A mystery to be sure, but for us right now, all I can confirm is that this guy doesn't need this treasure anymore. So let's alleviate this chap of its contents, which I found to be an emerald, a circlet of peerless conjuration, and a silver ring. Monetarily, congregating to provide a value of 1,592 gold, which, much like Kyle from Sky Oblivion, is extremely handsome, especially for such a small container. The box that is, not Kyle. Further into the mine, we'll pass through a crooked and abnormally slanted sinus of the cave system, which has been verdantly overgrown with mossy and dark dwelling plants, all of which is poetically lit by the careless flicker of a dim lantern. 
which rests grounded among the curled fronds and zephyr-caressed ivy that waves in the tunneled wind. After we traverse this picturesque and palatially planted passageway, we'll come out into what I can only describe as a small workman's township where the mine's resident bandits and reavers have set up living quarters and basic services such as a blacksmith's forge. It is quite actually a small township tucked away into the depths of Damp Hall Mine. Anyway, there is a rather simple webbing of stone pathways that span through the air and grant access to various levels and sides of the chamber. All the way at the back in a dark corner on a level right above the passage in which we entered this hidden hamlet, we will find a log which has been used as an executioner's block as is made clear with the bloodied remains of a humanoid creature. But along with this gruesome discovery, we have a lovely discovery, as just up from the bones in a small nook, we will find a beloved wooden chest tucked away for so few to find. Inside this chest, I found steel plate boots, an amethyst, 33 gold, two iron ore, two lockpicks, and a sapphire coming together with a combined total value of 686 gold, which makes mingling with bloody bones a little more bearable. Pushing further into the deepest passages of Damp Hall Mine, we'll find ourselves in a very obscure, crooked, and tilted causeway that twists up into the stone heart of the island of Solstheim. Walled with what appears to be jagged stalactites that have fallen from the cracked ceiling above and now litter the ground like needles in a pin cushion. About halfway up the serpentine pathway, there is a fallen stone column on our right. We want to stray from the path and follow this accidental ramp up into the highest pitch black and untouched galleries of the rough razor moor of this cave, where Resting occultly is a wooden chest hidden with great effort, tucked into the marbled attic of this tunnel. Inside of which I found Nordic carved armor, a dwarven bow, two loaves of bread, probably stale, 77 gold, a scroll of hysteria, something that has been used on the US quite recently, and a copy of the book, War of the First Council, the values of which combine to make a collective value of 2,476 gold, a number as beautiful as my future ex-wife. For now though, we move out into the final chamber of this dungeon, a room which delivers a magnificent sight, the likes of which I can only recall seeing in the deepest, conceptually cacophonous bowels of the Wailing Delve. It's a magma vent locked inside the chamber known as the Citadel of Din Mirror, a cavernous and eerily ancient Daedric Chapel beneath the city of Mornhold, which is the capital of Morrowind. Now if such a dungeon sounds interesting to you, we do explore it in the Easter egg video I made for the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind's Tribunal expansion. Be sure to give that a watch. For now though, much like a taser, this cascade here is nothing short of stunning. A shattered and divided waterfall that gently caresses down the strange and cathedral organesque stone structure at the back of the cave. Gathered and grouped in intentional bundles, we can find piles of plunder placed and residing in the geological cornucopia cache of coin and collective clover. To the left of the waterfall, however, there is a small dirt ramp that leads up to the mid of the docile rapids. From here, we can tiptoe across the bauble crowns of the speleothem that form the structurally uneven tiers of the weeping chute. With our final steps, we'll reach a small icy pool of water. Resting on a petite landing at the opposite side is a chest, the very one I brought you here for. Inside this chest, I found a boiled creme treat, a flawless amethyst, a flawless garnet, a flute, 60 gold, two lockpicks, and an adept robes of destruction. All of these treasures coming together to create a total combined value of 2,123 gold. And for our final haul, we have a favorite 
find of mine. Something I did show you in the Curating Curious Curiosities video for the Hold of Falkreath, which I could not more highly recommend you watch. If I were to have a magnum opus as a YouTuber, it would probably be that video. Anyway, at the northernmost edge of Falkreath, which could easily be mistaken for the tundra of Whiterun, but alas, borders say otherwise. But just to the north of North Brittle Shin Pass, we can find a fallen tree lying next to the pathway. As we approach, we'll see it is in fact hollow, the perfect place to hide a little something which is exactly what has happened, as in here there is a small iron strongbox, vaguely masked in the chromatic ground cover that carpets the surrounding area. Inside, I found a flawless diamond, a flawless emerald, a garnet, and four gold, all of which merge into a collective value of 1,854 gold. Now, if we combine the combined values of all 10 of these chests and lock boxes that we uncovered throughout this video, we have a whopping 15,297 golds worth of treasure. Not a bad haul at all. Be sure to let me know what you get from these chests and what the combined total value is for you. And with that familiar chap, we're at the end of this treasure-filled sojourn. I do hope you learned something new about Skyrim and that you'll be able to use this new knowledge to raid and plunder the rewards hidden in secrecy within Skyrim. If you do know of any other hidden and secretive chests and treasures, be sure to let me know down below in the comments. Now while you're down there, check out the description for all of my social media links, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, along with joining our brand new Discord server. I'd very much enjoy seeing you there. Also be sure to check out my other Elder Scrolls content via the playlist down in the description. And if you would like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can do so on Patreon or by joining right here on YouTube. See that join button? That button. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos that I create for you to enjoy. So your support is most genuinely appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. So leave a like, leave a comment, hit up my socials and consider subscribing so that you are notified when more content like this is uploaded. I've been Camel, and I'd like to thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for supporting my channel, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.